Next news, Louis C.K. tells the Israeli crowd, I'd rather be in Auschwitz than New York City. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know who Louis C.K. is, he's a very famous director, um, producer, actor, comedian, uh, who was accused in the Me Too, Me Too movement of uh, masturbating in front of some women and also masturbating on the phone uh, with his co-workers, like women working directly underneath him. Uh, bad show. Louis C.K. came out and said, yes, I did it. Yes, I apologize. Uh, it was inappropriate. I shouldn't have done that. Well, he also lost a lot of his um, following. He lost his shows that were being produced at the time under him. He lost a lot for it. Well, he's making a comeback, uh, and he goes to Israel, and he's talking about how much he hates New York City, uh, and he tells them he would rather be in Auschwitz than in New York City. Uh, when the cloud, and he, he even specifies after that, well, now... Not back when it was open. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. That's a good joke. Uh, and the crowd, the crowd went wild. They yeah. cheered. They thought it was hilarious. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Louis UK, he is Jewish. Um, he was born, I don't, I don't know, that doesn't matter. But he, so he's, he's Jewish, uh, and he makes this, this joke, which I guess a lot of people, uh, especially cancer, uh, cancel culture, Can it is a cancer. Um, they they really want to bury Louis C.K. after the whole Me Too movement thing. Uh, a lot of people don't think that he does deserve a comeback, and they're disgusted by that joke. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good joke. Come on, like first it's shocking, and then he clarifies. I'm like, oh, so he, he rather be he rather be in Auschwitz than in New York. People are like, what? How? Well, go today, today, like <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. That's I mean, that's I mean, this is why he's a great comedian. I mean, I don't know, guys. What do you think about? I, I think he it was. Do you think it, the his what he did in the w with all the things that happened with Me Too? It got all mixed with the whole rape allegations and rape cases, which what he did was not nearly close to any of that. I mean, he. He didn't he like ask the woman that if he can do this and they said yes or did he was that like am I reading this what no so you're you're thinking about the joke that he made uh, he did touch on what he did uh -huh. where he said um, even if women say yes to you masturbating in front of them don't do it because it's not very popular right. Uh -huh. And he's talking about the feedback that he received from everybody saying, "Look, I know you didn't rape her, but don't pull out your pe don't don't touch Wait. yourself while you're talking to women." Huh? Wait, he did that without them giving him permission. Like, that's what he did. Well, so with his with his workers, that there's there's an accusation from his worker, um, a woman who worked for him, so she was underneath him, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where she called him on the phone and he was just masturbating to her. Without any pre like talking about she it, sent. Okay, without well, that Okay, yeah, that's pretty w disgusting. So he he did he he owned up, oh. he admitted, he you know he did it. He apologized. Oh. Um, but again, and but again, it's different. I mean, if we say this is a lot of people, if we say this is not as bad as the rape allegations, right? Uh, the rape uh, crime, and people are like, oh, so do you think this is okay? Like. No, right. if I say and, X, and, if I say X is not as bad as Y, that is not an endorsement of X. This is so simple. Every time you say, well, Y is worse than X, people are like, oh, why are you making X, you know, why are you endorsing X? Why do you think X is okay? I never said X is okay, but go on, sorry. No, and, and you and I got into, at least I know that I did, got into a lot of trouble um, over the whole Lawrence Krauss thing when right. I said that maybe we should just wait for evidence. And people freaked out, and all of a sudden, I'm a rape apologist. So I definitely wanted to make that point very clear. Is you know, just because we're saying it's, uh, you know, not as bad as rape, does not mean that I'm saying what he did was great, right. um, and and wasn't deserving of some sort of uh, repercussion, which I I believe he received. Right. Um, and I believe that he deserves his comeback. Yeah, man. But how, you know, this would be even more difficult for him to make a joke like this by the way about Auschwitz if he wasn't Jewish like the whole cancel culture show up and mute your microphone when you're not speaking um cancel culture like people will go like after him a lot more if he wasn't Jewish so which is so stupid because you really don't have to check your ethnicity before 
you could make a joke or not. But I'm actually glad that he's making this uh, jokes about uh, you know dark humor about these these very sensitive things because come this is the you know comedians are not the role of comedians in society is not just to make you laugh. Okay, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of red lines that society draws for you, and for they say like you cannot cross this line. You cannot cross this line, and there are going to be consequences for you to crossing this line. And usually these lines are just drawn, uh, you know, with no actual analysis of whether these lines are, pro pro you know. Uh, stopping any harm from happening. It's just mostly disgust or being offended. And the, the problem with these lines is that if you allow, if you just don't push back against people just just drawing lines on the ground and telling you that you cannot say this, you cannot do that, you cannot make this joke, then you're normalizing that behavior. You're normalizing and you're giving more authority and power to the, to the people that have made a career at, out of drawing lines and you if you keep letting them do that they keep drawing lines all around you until you you realize that you're in a small very small circle that you can't even step out of right and what comedian and the only way these red lines work if if is if you have popular support for drawing these lines and people accept that and people f and you could get more people to accept that saying something is offensive but the role of comedians are to make people laugh while they cross these lines, right? Because if you just cross these lines, most of most of the popular support that the, the, the uh, that these you know offense junkies have managed to um, mo most of the support that they managed to create behind them, right? Most of the supporters, um, it's harder to get those people to switch if you just tell facts or if you tell them like look this is not this is the true thing the nature of this this is what i'm going to say uh, and it shouldn't be if, if you're offended well just don't listen to me that is not going to get all of a lot of these um supporters of the offense drug case to switch side and accept accept that this red line shouldn't be there but but comedians are are at the front line because when they when they just make people laugh because they're like, oh, it's just a joke. Oh, this person has a comedic license. It's a comedian, so it's okay. But as soon as they laugh, they are stepping, all the people that are laughing are stepping across that red line with the comedian. And then it makes the activists be able to take advantage of all the people that cross that red line. So the comedians are at the, at the front of this battle and the activists follow. So that's how important the role of a comedian is in our society. Um, let, me, let me, you guys have any comments on that before I read the top comment? No. Nope. Okay. So I'm just going to, one of the top comment is very long. So I'm just going to see if there is a second top comment that is a bit shorter. Oh, here. Uh, Brent is saying, am I, sh uh, and I'm sure it was hilarious because Lu uh, Louis knows how to be funny. Uh, print any joke and it will sound horrible if you're not a true fan of comedy don't write about it yeah i mean the t yeah i agree with that okay so atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.